it's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering all the questions you guys send me on email. Uh, if you'd like to send me a question and ask me something about prehistoric life, go to DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and send me your question. Keep in mind, I get thousands of questions and I just can't answer all of them, so I try my best. Let's get started. JC from Kansas City, Kansas wrote and said, well, first of all, JC, let me tell you, Kansas City, Kansas, if I understand correctly, you guys say you've got the world's greatest barbecue. Well, I would love to come up there and try it. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and we think our barbecue is pretty good. So I'd love to come up there. Maybe someday I'll come to Kansas, invite you and all your friends, and we'll go try barbecue, and we'll see if it's as good as they say. Okay, JC says, why did Triceratops have horns? One main reason. It's all about defense. This is the horn of a very young Triceratops. This is a small one. Looks big, but to Triceratops it's not. It doesn't take much to look at this and realize this thing is pointy. And a pointy horn can mean a very big owie if something tries to attack you. So they use their horns to be able to defend themselves. That's their main function. But I think they had a second function. I think they did something else, JC. What they did is, is the horns would help um, uh, demonstrate to other members of the herd how mature they were. The bigger your horns, the older you were. And that helped to deter a fight. If two rivals were getting ready to attack each other, they would be able to look at their, the, their opponent's horns and go, wait a minute, his horns are twice as big as mine. That means he's probably twice as old. That means he's probably twice as smart. That means he's probably twice as strong. So it would be sort of a message that would say, you don't want to mess with me. By the way, JC, I, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name correctly, because it might be Jace. You may pronounce it Jace. So if I've been pronouncing it wrong, I, I'm so sorry. If I've been pronouncing it right, hooray, that's one in a thousand I ever got right. Okay, uh, Katie from Topeka, Kansas, somebody else from Kansas. Katie, I'll invite you to come with me to try barbecue when I come to Kansas. Katie says, Dinosaur George, I watched one of your shows and I wanted to ask how many different kinds of dinosaurs are there? Well, Katie, we know of about like between 720 and 750 different individual species. That's a lot. But I'll tell you this, I will bet you that there is tons more to be discovered. On average, about every three weeks, somewhere in the world, somebody finds a new species of dinosaur. It would not surprise me if by 100 years from now, we've discovered there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of individual species. So for now, go to my website and click on the Dinosaurs A to Z page. I've got an alphabetical listing. You will be stunned at all of the different names of dinosaurs on that list. Okay, uh, Jay from Mandeville, Jamaica. Jay, thank you for correcting me for my mispronunciation of Mandeville the last time I responded to one of your questions. I am so sorry. What happens is, is I come in and I get this list of questions about three seconds before the camera comes on. And so I don't often have time to proofread and sometimes I make those mistakes. I apologize. I don't want to accept the Jama uh, upset the Jamaicans because I certainly want to come to your beautiful country and uh, visit sometimes. So uh, when I come to Jamaica, uh, remember, I will stop in at Mandeville and apologize to you in person. Jay asked, what is the smartest ceratopsian? This is a very tough question, Jay. It's a very tough question. The, the reason why I say it's a tough question is because estimating intellect uh, on any dinosaur is very difficult. Now, we have ways of looking and looking at the shape of their brain. We can CAT scan their skull, and what happens is when the dinosaur dies, the brain, the soft tissue decomposes, but it leaves behind the space where it used to sit in the brain. And paleontologists can CAT scan it, look at that shape, and then determine uh, what the shape of the brain was. Then by comparing that to modern animals, it allows them to at least make an educated guess about its intellect. The problem with ceratopsians is that there are no animals alive today that have the exact same brain shape. So here's my guess. The most common ceratopsian that I'm aware of is triceratops. And because triceratops was common, it suggests to me that it was more successful than the other ceratopsians. 
And since it was more successful, that then suggests that it may have been a little smarter. It was able to deal with things differently. It could handle a variety of circumstances that maybe the lesser ceratopsians couldn't handle. That may be why we find more of them. So my best guess is Triceratops was the most intelligent ceratopsian, but it was not uh, by any, uh, there's no way I would know that for certain. Okay, my friend uh, Raptor Lewis from uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Raptor uh, asked a great question. He said, uh, I thought about the rarity of any species related to Tyrannosaurus rex, any of the Tyrannosaurs. And it's very rare. You, you don't find egg nests, you don't find complete skeletons, you don't find juvenile. So his question is, why? Why are Tyrannosaurs so rare when other dinosaurs are not? That is a very, very good, solid scientific question. And here's why I think. It's because of their effectiveness as a predator. I believe, Raptor, that Tyrannosaurs were such effective predators that nature needed to keep their numbers in check or literally these animals would eat themselves out of existence. We see that in nature today. You don't see as many lions as you see jackals. You don't see as many great white sharks as you see black tips. You don't see as many grizzly bears as you do black bears. The reason why is because the apex predator numbers have to be kept in check or they literally will obliterate all of their food source. These predators do not have the intellect of a human where they can go out and build fences and raise stock and eat as much as they want. They can't do that. So nature has ways of controlling it. So I think perhaps tyrannosaurs may have had a much longer gestation period. That means um, the amount of time it took between the time they laid their eggs and the babies hatched. Secondly, I don't think there was a very high survival rate among baby tyrannosaurs because they lived in a very tough environment. And remember this about Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus rex in particular. If you have babies and you see a baby from somebody else, your number one priority is to kill that other baby Tyrannosaur so that your kids have a better chance of survival. So right off the bat, you've got infanticide, which is the killing of one's own species going on. You have Tyrannosaurs out there killing other baby Tyrannosaurs. So that may be a reason why you don't see many of them. And then you look at their lifestyle. They lived a very tough life. Every single Tyrannosaurus skeleton that I've ever had the opportunity to study, every one without any exception, has had numerous broken and healed bones. That suggests a very rough and tumble life. So it could be that, that not many of them survived birth, that not many of them survived growing up, and even those that did survive had a tough life. And finally, there's one other reason that may be the answer to why we don't find many tyrannosaurs. In order to become fossilized, you usually have to live in the low-lying areas where it's more likely that flooding is going to cover your body. It could very well be that tyrannosaurs just did not like those environments. They may have only come into the lowlands during uh, peaks of migration, when there was more food. They may have spent their lives in a little bit more of the upland area, not the mountains, but in higher elevation where they didn't have to contend with flooding as much. So it could very well be that it's just a matter of they didn't like the areas where you were really more likely to be buried by sediment. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you all for your questions. For any of you that want to write to me, go to dinosaurgeorge.com. While you're there, check out uh, our, my blog. Check out our free newsletter. Sign up to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. It's a lot of fun. I always send out some cool stuff. In the meantime, for you little ones out there, uh, you make sure and practice your manners and you practice your reading skills and if you're good at those two things, I promise you, you're going to be successful no matter what you do. Until the next time, you guys, this is Dinosaur George. Thanks for writing. I will see you all again soon. Take care.